University Hospital Coventry is a large teaching hospital in the West Midlands in the UK. We provide care for a population of just over one million. Each year, approximately 6,000 babies are born, and of those babies, some 10% will have a problem requiring care within the neonatal service. These may be problems identified before, during or after birth. Fortunately, most babies are born healthy and well and are able to spend the first hour or two of life together with their mother on the labour ward, having skin-to-skin -skin contact and to establish breastfeeding. This is the normal course of events. In those babies in which there is a problem, the baby will be immediately transferred to the neonatal unit with pulse oximetry monitoring during the transport process and that monitoring with pulse oximetry continues into the neonatal unit. There are a number of different problems that babies may have requiring admission to the neonatal service. Those problems may be related to prematurity, they may be related to infection, to sepsis, or a baby may have pulmonary problems. It may be that we are looking after a baby who has had a problem that's been diagnosed antenatally for which we can preempt the, the need for the use of pulse oximetry monitoring. The use of pulse oximetry to diagnose congenital heart disease has been substantiated by two international studies. All babies born in our hospital undergo pulse oximetry as part of the routine newborn baby examination. The identification of congenital heart disease has been greatly enhanced by the use of pulse oximetry. We can now detect babies with congenital heart disease that hitherto would not have been detected until they presented later with acute clinical deterioration and illness. The implementation of pulse oximetry for congenital heart screening has also inadvertently led us to the identification of a number of babies who have problems not related to the heart but related to conditions where there is poor perfusion such as early sepsis and conditions where there are respiratory or maladaptation problems from birth. In a recent study in which we participated, some 20,000 babies were screened for congenital heart disease and we identified 53 babies who would not have been identified through our normal screening clinical examination routine. All babies admitted to the NICU are monitored with pulse oximetry. This allows us to detect subtle changes in the baby's heart rate and the baby's oxygen saturation, which may be a sign of incipient sepsis or may tell us about deterioration in the baby's respiratory condition. Pulse oximetry in this situation serves really as an early warning system to some change in the baby that allows clinicians, both nurses and doctors, to intervene earlier to care for the baby. Over the last 20 years, the survival of babies born at the margins of viability has considerably improved in the UK, such that today more than 50% of babies born at less than 28 weeks gestation are now surviving. At the same time, signal extraction technology, which is now built into the state-of-the-art saturation monitors that we use, has virtually eliminated motion artefact and has allowed us to care for babies in conditions of low perfusion and poor pulse oximetry saturation. Pulse oximetry as a tool has also been the subject of a large number of international clinical trials. One of the aims in neonatal care currently is to look at appropriate targeted oxygen saturation for babies of different gestation in different conditions. We know that oxygen has pros and cons. Those babies who are nursed in higher oxygen concentrations we now know are more likely to survive, but that is at the risk of development of retinopathy of prematurity. The current state of the art is that there are numerous studies currently with a number of early results that are coming out that are beginning to suggest that close targeting of oxygen saturation is important. Pulse oximetry is now an essential tool in the management of the critical care of newborn infants. There is much yet to learn about the optimal level of oxygen saturation and together with the advances in the technology built within the oximetry devices that we use, we are confident that we will achieve that aim.